there. Ooh, and that bottom just got me too. I spent a moment with the King Cobra. I absolutely love it. Hey, hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to the vlog. I am somewhere outside of Durban, South Africa. I have no idea what today is gonna bring, but I know it's gonna be absolutely epic. Look at this amazing day. I mean, I tell you what, I could wake up like this every day of my life. Before we head out on some African adventures, I guess we're gonna do some Zulu stuff and some who knows what else, but we are actually stopping over a guy named Dingo's house. Absolutely incredible snake collection. We're gonna have some fun with some animals that I absolutely love, including King Cobra. So, what do you say we just jump into this? All right, so I'm with Dingo here, and of course, my favorite snake on the planet. Dingo, tell me a little bit about this guy. His name's Thor, he's a Malaysian king cobra. Oh my he's God. about four meters long at the moment. Uh, had him since captivity, so he was captive bred snake, and he was the first king cobra to sire baby king cobras in Africa. Oh my gosh. And as you can see, he likes climbing, but he's quite a relaxed snake. This is what he does every day, messing with black mambas and king cobras and stuff like that. Where can people find your crazy antics? I mean, I, I mean, this guy has a cool YouTube channel, Facebook page. Where can we find you? Come check us out on Dingo SA on YouTube or Dingo Official on Facebook. Part of our adventure. Oh my gosh, definitely. I will put the links in the description, guys. We're going to see some other really cool snakes that Dingo is playing with. But just look at this absolutely amazing king here. Definitely my favorite snake. I mean, that thing is crazy. And of course, anytime. I get an opportunity to mess with such amazing animals like kings. I mean, I tell you what, I think they're, they're just the most amazing animal on the planet. They're so smart, they're so intuitive. Uh, they definitely are always trying to kind of figure you out. And this is just an absolute puppy dog. I mean, look, at he's not hooding, he's not mock charging. He's just kind of hanging out. And the thing that's nice about king cobras like this is that they're long enough where you've got plenty of room to stay away from the bitey end. You definitely don't want to get hit by a king cobra. Look at the size of that thing's head plate. This thing is incredible. Oh. This is, I tell you what guys, I know this isn't an African animal and we're here for an African adventure, but the truth is, anytime I get an opportunity to just be, even spend a moment with a king cobra, I absolutely love it. All right, so this is an amazing animal. This is an adult female Corallus batsai uh, Amazon basin emerald tree boa. So I never thought we'd come to South Africa and be able to see basins and uh, especially a Tony Nikolai basin just this is a this is an amazing animal. Oh my god! No way! I know, and you guys know that forest is huge into Corallus, the tree boas, of course, green tree pythons. So he is in his heyday here. I mean, look at this animal! Oh my gosh, that thing is ridiculous, dude! No way! <laughs> this is awesome, Dingo. Gloves. <laughs> we got a little black mamba action going here. We are in Africa, so we got to do black mambas. These things are absolutely mental. Uh, Dingo is a pro here, and this is the type of snake that literally makes even pros look like they don't know what they're doing because they are just so agile, they're so fast. I mean, take a look at this animal here. Holy moly. Oh my gosh. It is just fired up, ready to go. Oh my gosh. And what doesn't help is such a hot day too. Yeah, so it's really hot, it's warm. It's, again, the sun is beating out here. It's warm. Uh, oh my gosh, what a snake. Huh? <laughs> this is awesome, I love this. Oh my gosh, there he goes. Now he's calm for a second here, but not too long. Oh gosh. The black mamba, guys. It doesn't get any more real than this. There's really two snakes in the world that seem like every handler should get a little nervous. One's the black mamba, one's the coastal taipan. They act almost the same, but I mean, just take a look at that beautiful snake right there. That is incredible. And that's gotta be a good, you know, probably seven foot long, whippy, fast, Oh my gosh, and again, these aren't aggressive snakes, they're very defensive snakes. They'll only come at you to get you to go away from them. I mean, that is an amazing animal. Dingo, how long have you been working with these guys? Uh, for about 20 years now. Every one of these that you work with is different. You can see it's starting to relax because it's got space. 
They're a terrible species to work, at, work with when you're cramped up and you don't have space. When it's got space like this, you saw how wild it was in the beginning. Now relaxing, lifting its tongue up like that, just smelling. And this is about as relaxed as you get a black mamba. Tell you what guys, uh, you know, I know I'm not on, not on the tail end of this animal, but my heart rate is still up. I mean, this is amazing. I just love black mambas, I always have. And uh, it's great to be this close to one of them. What an absolutely gorgeous snake. And uh, such a personality, huh, Dingo? Absolutely. And again, guys, if you want to see this stuff all the time, you got to check out his channel, check out his Facebook page. Uh, this is what this guy does. I mean, how awesome of a life is that? Black mamba. I mean, this is the snake of, of legends, man. This is the snake of, of lore. It's unbelievable. Oh my gosh, I love this snake so much. And again, they're so quick and they're so whippy. You have to be very careful. The other thing that happens with black mambas is that they'll wrap their tail around you sometimes. So you have to be a little bit careful. They'll also climb up a stick super fast. So these guys are definitely not an animal to be messed with at all. Oh. fast, aren't they? Oh, I tell you, the adrenaline gets going with these guys. Oh my gosh. So of course, this is a Bushmaster here. Dingo, tell me a little bit about this one. This is awesome. Uh, these are Central American Bushmasters. It's just a stenner freeze. And uh, she's about seven years old now. So she's just over about 2.2 meters or so. Yeah. Biggest vipers in the world, Bushmasters. Yeah. And uh, beautiful snake, eats really well. Captive bred snake, which obviously makes it easier. And hopefully we can breed them in South Africa sometime soon. It's amazing. Oh my gosh, another one of Dingo's amazing animals is this one here. Look at the size of this Meng Chang Viper. I mean, these guys are incredible. Of course, these are a Chinese animal and uh, unbelievable. Oh my gosh, I've seen several of these guys. I've even actually messed with them over in China, but I've never seen one this big. I mean, this thing is absolutely incredible. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. It's one of the prettiest Vipers for sure. And I tell you what, look at this thing. I'm absolutely blown away. I mean, I don't even know what to say. Look at the size of its head and its body. Oh my gosh, this thing is incredible. Guys, take a look at this. These are super cool. These are actually banded rankles. And, and take a look at this one right over here. Now, of course, I'm wearing eye protection because these guys are spitters, but this one actually is playing dead. You can see right here. I mean, look, look at those guys. Oh my gosh, rankles are some of the neatest cobras for sure. Take a look at that sucker right there. Oh, and that venom just got me too. I mean, you can see he'll actually spit right at you. Oh my gosh. Whew. And every time they strike, a little venom just kind of flies out as well. What a beautiful snake though, isn't it? And wrinkles are very interesting. You, again, you can see this one here is literally playing dead. That's one of the things they'll do, almost like a hog nose snake. But uh, trust me, he is completely fine. And it's interesting to see that these are similar localities, but one has the yellow banded and the other one is like an orange banded. And I'll be honest with you, I've seen some wrinkles. The majority of the ones that I've seen have been almost all brown. And oh, there you go, bud. There you go. It's all right. There you go. There you go. And guys, if you see, I'm actually getting some venom right here. Oh, all over the lens too. There's venom on the lens, there's venom on my eyeglasses. So this guy's a little spitter for sure. Oh. They'll play dead so that they think that predators or think they're dead and just leave them alone. Oh, look at this little guy. Come on, buddy. Wake up, buddy. There he goes. That one was so feisty, wasn't it? I definitely like to spit a lot. Whereas this one just is like, I'm gonna play dead and just uh, hope that you think I'm okay. Oh, now the other one's gone. Look at that. See? See this one, just a few minutes ago, this one was so full of just energy and hooding up and spitting. And now look at him. He's just like, all right, look it, I'm dead too. Oh my gosh, what an awesome thing to see. I've never seen this before. I am super excited about it. <laughs> Guys, I'm freaking out. How cool is this? Of course, this is an African bullfrog, just like my chubby monkey, but we're in Africa. It's awesome to be messing with a huge African bullfrog in the continent of Africa. How awesome is that? Oh my gosh, I can't wait to get home and see chubby monkey. Okay, take a look at this, man. This is crazy absolutely gorgeous country out here and of course this is where we're gonna let the black mamba go there's tons of black mambas in this area so this will be absolutely perfect for them look at this guys oh my gosh this is real Africa I love it this is amazing. Gosh, darn, I should have brought it. 
All right, so the idea is to, to go ahead and let this mamba go right here, and hopefully it'll go on the water, and it has a couple options. It can go across over to the bluffs over here. It can come down river, whatever it wants to go, so I think it's gonna be good. Now, let's just recap for a second here. This mamba has been out in the sun, basically. It's about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. It's gonna be pretty fired up, so this should be pretty fun, but it's awesome releasing this, and of course, this is the first time I've ever released a black mamba, so, oh, he's gonna be so happy. Look at buddy. Oh my gosh. There you go, sweetheart. There you go, sweetheart. Up you go. And away you go. Be free, buddy. Look at that thing go. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Oh, do you see that? Oh, now that is freaking awesome. Oh. And he, he chose this way here. He's gonna come right across up here. He's gonna come up on, up on that land and he's gonna have everything he wants. Oh, look at his head. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. And there he goes, up on land and up, as quick as that. Disappears into the thatch. I mean, how freaking cool is that? I mean, guys, I don't know if it gets any cooler than that, man. We're taking a quick stop at the reptile park and this guy actually, take a look at him. This was once a living crocodile. How freaking amazing is that? But uh, I don't know exactly what's going on here at the park, but there are a bunch of really cool crocodiles and all kinds of, oh, there's an alligator in there I can see. We're just gonna check this place out and see what they have to offer. Places like this are really crocodile farms, and you know, the crocodile farms really breed these animals for their skins, to be totally honest with you. But I know it sounds kind of weird, but the truth is, is it's a good conservation effort. This really causes the poaching to go away, right? If a farm like this that captive raises animals, produces them for the skins, and takes care of all of that, there's really no need for people to go out in the wild and poach the wild crocodiles. The same thing happened with saltwater crocodiles, alligators in America, is that farms like this really save the actual species itself. So these guys work mainly with Nile crocodiles, but these type of facilities are actually saving Nile crocodiles in the wild. I'm not a fan of alligator skin or crocodile skin personally, but I do understand that it's an important role in the future of the survival of the species. So one of our journeys here in South Africa is to try to find a huge crocodile for forest. And uh, we're looking at this animal here, and it's absolutely enormous, but uh, it's not big enough for you, right? As a collector, I wanna get my hands on the biggest one the I can out one. there, and then there's another zoo that wants one too, so I'm out here kind of hunting for the both of us, and there's rumors of an Ethiopian bloodline of Niles that's supposed to be the biggest crocs in the world. Oh my God. And so both for a conservation, you know, we want to get those bloodlines out into captivity so we can preserve those giant bloodlines because unfortunately, sport hunters yeah. always want to go out and get the, get the biggest, biggest and one. best bloodlines, you know, yeah. so they want to have their picture, you know, with the, the dead crocodile, the biggest one they can find. Yeah. And unfortunately, those are the strongest, best genes that we want to get, you know, preserved in the captive gene pool, so. Yeah. It's definitely been a fun, fun journey, you know. Hey, let's go to Africa and try to find the, the biggest Nile crocodiles we can. But we're off to a good start, I guess. I guess, and yeah. later this week, we're actually gonna probably travel a long way out of our way for one crocodile in particular. Hopefully, we're not gonna get there and it's gonna be a 12-footer and it's gonna absolutely be like a 15-plus footer. We're looking for like, you know, there, there's even rumors of a Gustavi too, and Gustavi wow. is the famous man-eating Nile crocodile yeah. that they say has, you know, really eaten more people than any animal on Earth. I mean, oh it's God. rumored to have eaten over 300 people. Oh so. my gosh. Um, so, so we're looking for that. Yeah, so Great we're looking idea. for Gustavi too, the new, the bigger, better Gustavi. Well, later in the week, I'll take you guys on the journey. We're either gonna be really happy or we're gonna be really bummed we went so far out of our way. So let's hope it is a 15 plus foot Nile crocodile. Check this out guys, a leopard tortoise. Oh my gosh, how freaking cool. He's just sleeping. It's starting to get a little bit cooler in the evening, so he's just kind of sleeping for the night. But it's cool to see a freaking leopard tortoise. <laughs> okay, I'm always freaked out when I come all the way across the world and come to a wildlife park, and there's a leucistic Texas rat snake. I mean, how crazy is that to think that there's a croc farm with a leucistic Texas rat snake on display? So as the South African sun sets behind me, this day is coming to an end. We're gonna sit around here and do what they call a braai, which is a traditional barbecue that we'll have some dinner and just sit around the fire. It's gonna be absolutely incredible and just chill out. But we are leaving tomorrow morning at four in the morning for a really cool adventure. I can't wait to take you guys on. Hopefully it's gonna be absolutely amazing because I know I had an incredible time today. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I hope that you have an absolutely wonderful day moving forward. Thank you guys as always for all your support. You mean the world to me and 
I love you guys so much. Can you do me a couple favors really quick? Just smash that like button and remember to be kind to someone today. And I promise I'm going to see you guys tomorrow.